Hello and welcome to another episode of Explore Iceland with me. This time I want to take you to a canyon because it's one of my favorite places, especially in autumn, because look at all these colors, uh, they are going wild. So I want to take you there, or actually I've been on that trip already, so I want to show you and comment on it. And we will talk about all sorts of stuff, geology, folklore, Odin, but it's getting cold and windy, so I'm gonna move inside and we will go through the trip together. Let's go! Up in the northern Iceland, there is a big canyon called Asbirgi. It's part of the Vatnajökull National Park, and for me, the best time to go is in September, when the autumn is in full swing and the colors are just all over the place. During normal tourist season, people usually drive down the canyon, just look around for a little bit, and leave in like 10 minutes, which is a shame because there's a lot of hiking trails around that are worth walking and it's such a vastly different place from everything else. The canyon itself is 3.5 kilometers long, 1 kilometer wide and the cliffs go up to 100 meters high. Those are just numbers, to understand the scale is of course better to see it on your own, but I'm here today to show you around and tell you how it came to be. There are mythological and geological explanations of this place and to me they are both really interesting. Let's start with mythology because the story is sort of crazy. It all starts with gods settling down in Asgardur, or Asgard as you know it, and creating Midgard and Valhalla. When a mysterious builder shows up and tells the gods that he can fortify their palace in three seasons, but he wants in exchange the goddess Freya, the sun and the moon. Gods are intrigued. They really like the idea of fortifying their palace, but the price is too high. So they tell him, go ahead, you can do it, but you have to do it in one season and not a single man can help you. And he says, okay, cool, but um, can I use my horse, Svadilfari? And then your favorite god, Loki, comes in and says, sure, lol. But Svadilfari turns out to be insanely strong and he can basically do all of the hard work. So the gods are angry at Loki now, saying like, dude, why did you allow this horse? Like, we don't want to give up our sun and the moon. We don't care about Freya, but come on, you have to go fix it. And Loki, known as a trickster who can change shape and sex and all that stuff, turns himself into a horse, a female horse, a mare and just gallops all the way to Svadilfari, seduces him into the bushes away from the builder, who turns out to not be just a normal person, but actually an evil giant. So Thor comes in, just wags the guy with Mjolnir on his head, and he's dead now. But Loki, the dumbass, got knocked up and delivers a beautiful, beautiful eight-legged horse called Sleipnir. And Sleipnir becomes this legendary horse, the best of them all, because he can ride you to hell and back. And the god Odin did. He once drove Sleipnir to hell and back, but he wasn't careful enough. One day, when he was driving Sleipnir, he got too close to earth 
and one of Sleipnir's hooves touched the ground and left a mark. And that's what you can see in Asbergi, and that's why Asbergi is called a Sleipnir's footprint. That's the place where Sleipnir touched the ground and left the mark. Sometimes Asbergi is referred to as the shelter of the gods, and also apparently it's a capital city of Huldu folk, or hidden people in Iceland. So there are also stories of hidden people and elves and stuff like that. It's a very special place indeed. Scientific explanation says that the canyon was created by glacial floods. One that happened after last ice age, approximately 10,000 years ago, and another one that was like 3,000 years ago, after a volcano erupted and melted the ice. In both cases, a lot of ice melts and gets into the water system, like rivers, and just the sheer force of the water flow carves into the stone. Water plays an important role in geology as it shapes our planet through weathering and erosion. It takes away soil and sedimentary rocks that are very easy to disrupt and leaves behind harder, more resistant rocks that form the canyon walls. Nowadays in Asbergi you can only see the remnants of the waterfall that once used to be here and that probably formed this canyon. Pick whatever story you like more, but to me they're both magic. But yeah, that's it for today. I just wanted to show you this place and share these stories because they're really interesting to me, so I hope you enjoy them as well. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe and click the bell button as well. Leave a comment down below, click the like button, you know what to do. And I will see you next time. But until then, ciao!